Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I'm Bobby Sylvester, joined as always by Mike Taglier. You can follow us on Twitter at Bobby Fantasy Pro and at Mike Taglier NFL. So, Tags, I'm taking a week off after this show, uh, just you know, before the major grind of the NFL season. Are you guys planning on doing like any mock drafts that way you can actually get a win while I'm gone? Oh, stop it, stop <laughs> it! I, I I'm gonna re- revoke your your vacation privileges and tell you that you can't go on vacation if you keep talking smack. Oh, man. Well, you got to beat me if you want to stop it, man. That's what it comes down to. So we're going to be talking players who are going to be moving up draft boards in the coming weeks as preseason gets underway. Then we're going to have a rematch between our guest and tags and fantasy feud. I love the questions today. I can't wait to see Joe redeem himself and not tags off the winner's podium for the first time in show history. That guest, of course, is Joe Pizapia. He's on Twitter at Joe Pizapia 17 and he's the author of the number one selling fantasy black book series and host of the fantasy black book pod on fan tracks. Joe, you up for the task, man? I absolutely am. I, I'm very disappointed in my showing. I watched it back last time, and and I'm disappointed. In, <laughs> honestly, I'm disappointed in the public, too. Some of your answers were crap. I mean, how can you not hate Doug Peterson's offense? I ha- how does he not irritate your fantasy team? I don't know. He's got to be on that list. But I'm still bitter, in case you couldn't tell. That's part, Yeah, that's part of the equation, though, right? I mean, you have to consider what the public is going to say. And, uh, you know, some people... Never take responsibility for yourself. That's that's yeah. rule number one as a fantasy <laughs> analyst. Just never take responsibility for your own failures. It's always somebody else's fault, Bobby. Well, well, Joe, this is really important. I need you to hold up your end of the bargain because Tags and I are going to have a bet. And I'm putting my pride behind you, Joe. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure. Tags, what are the stakes here? The stakes are that we have uh, one of the uh, content producers, editors. I, don't, I can't even keep track anymore of, of everybody that works with us on the Fantasy <laughs> Pros podcast here. But basically, what, what's happening is James behind the scenes is going to be creating poems that Bobby or myself would have to read to the other person if they lose this edition of Fantasy Feud. So I really don't want to read Bobby a poem. I'm really looking forward to having a poem read to me, Tags. We did a similar thing like this where we used to have a song bet where Dan Strafford and I, when we were on Sirius together on the Black Book show, we used to do like the loser had to sing a song of the other person's choice. So I made Dan sing I Touch Myself. I made him sing <laughs> I'm Every Woman. Um, it was it was amazing. Some of the amazing stuff there. Don't give our content producer any ideas. Tags and I are not singers. Uh, well, I think I just did. I hate to break it to you, Bobby, but I think <laughs> I just did. So there you go. All right, guys. So we're going to get into that here in just a second. First, I wanted to tell you about our cheat sheet creator. And uh, it is like cheating, right? The cheat sheet creator tags is amazing. It's the easiest way to create a cheat sheet for your draft. You can instantly import any rankings from the web or from your spreadsheet on your computer. You can even select like four or five experts and use those rankings and make that your cheat sheet. Premium members will also be able to customize rankings through a simple drag and drop interface, create player tiers with a click of a button and import and edit player notes. Guys, this cheat sheet creator is amazing. Rankings can also be imported to Excel or used in our draft simulator and draft assistant. All the customization work is done for you on your cheat sheet and it'll be leveraged into these integrated draft tools. And if you want to go to the cheat sheet creator and draft wizard, it's fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. All right, guys. So I mentioned we're going to be getting into some players who are moving up draft boards. First, though, I noticed that Le'Veon Bell is... uh, He's coming against the haters. He's heard our podcast and he hears us talk about, oh, Le'Veon Bell was 260 pounds last year. He looks pretty good, guys. I mean, he posted a video a video on Twitter saying 260, right? And then it's a video of him doing all of these uh, workouts this offseason. But, but my question remains, how does this help you in Adam Gase's offense? I don't imagine it does. Joe, are you, are you a fan <laughs> of uh, Le'Veon Bell's uh, ADP right now? Well, I know there's a lot of hate on this show for Le'Veon Bell. I was here last time and I remember it well. But I mean, to my retort for uh, Mike's question is, is there anything that can prepare anyone for Adam Gase's offense? I think the answer is no. So you might as well be healthy and take care of yourself and look good. I mean, he's got a lot of dollar bills to put in a lot of strippers uh, <laughs> G-string. So we know that Le'Veon Bell is a very busy man while Antonio Brown is catching, you know, bricks and things like that. He's, you know, he's working the fingers in different ways. He's got the dollar bills. He's doing all the things that he likes to do. But I mean, look, I mean, these all these videos. I don't care if it's the guy standing on the ball with the one foot and he's catching balls and red ball, yellow ball, and here's the stick. Now catch this stick. I mean, honestly, <laughs> at the end of the day, like, I love these things. They're hilarious to me, but you've seen them, right? Tell me that the inside you're not laughing a little bit like, okay, this is funny, and I'm sure it helps in some way, but it's more comical than anything else. Who knows? I just want to see him on the field. I want to see if Le'Veon Bell is as fast as he used to be. I'd like to see more Bobby Sylvester workout videos. That's what I'd like to see. Can you post some of those? Can I make a statement just so people don't think that I hate Le'Veon Bell? Like, I think Le'Veon Bell is an elite 
elite talent. I really do. But I also think that offense matters to running backs more than a talent than, than his talent does. And that's why he's like a middling second round pick to me. Like I, I don't I don't dislike Le'Veon Bell. He's fantastic. Um, he's a, he's a solid running back, like well well above average. But I, I just I just want to be clear in that. And and please please Jets fans, stop coming at me and telling me that I just have something against the Jets. It, it's really not. It's just that you hired the worst coach in the NFL. Yep, I agree. I agree with that, man. Yeah. And Joe, to get to your point, I will be posting more workout videos uh, after my vacation. I'm going to stop eating, you know, four or five pizzas a week and uh, get back in shape so I can break another world record. I've actually got the world record in mind, but we're saving it for. Uh, I don't know, for later in August. So you guys are going to have to wait for that. Um, so guys, we're going to be diving into some players who are going to move up ADP. That's average draft position. A lot of this is, you know, the general public is going to be, the more casual fans are going to be doing drafts and that changes things. Also in the preseason, we're going to get more information. Hey, this guy's actually healthy. Hey, this guy's actually the starter. And uh, so we're going to be looking at some of that. If you want to follow along, you can now check out our rankings. ECR, that's the expert consensus rankings. So, you know, 140 experts, mash them all together. That's the industry rankings at fantasypros.com slash rankings so joe we're gonna let you go first and we're gonna go in that round table fashion you're gonna go then tags then myself we'll each share four or five players that we think will jump up adp in the coming months who do you have if there's one guy that i've seen so far in early drafts that seems to be grossly undervalued and understandably so because of the wrist injury because he came out of nowhere almost last year because of the size it's philip Lindsay, and it's a guy right now on fantasy pros is going 56 overall in ppr and i can understand there's royce freeman still there there was a lot of variables i think that kind of equated into where people were starting to drop Philip Lindsay a little bit as of a lot of the mocks like we just did the one with tags and a couple of the other ones that I've been in some real drafts FSGA he's been falling a lot in fact he fell so far in Scott Fishbowl I think I got him in like the fifth or sixth round it was crazy so I, I'm like well I'm just gonna take him and I took Freeman too just in case anything happens because that kind of league is very specific but for me I think this is a guy now that he's at camp Says he's 100%. So far, all the medicals have been very good on him. Everything's moving in the right direction. You can't... There's one thing about Lindsay that you can't knock. It's his attitude and the work ethic. The guy is so easy to root for. He is so committed to being good and proving everybody wrong. And to me, I think this is a guy that he's at 56 now. I think he'll be 45, 46 by the time we get into mid-August when people see him on the field and take a deep breath and feel better about him. Because last year... He was absolutely outstanding and consistent, and I think this year they stand to be a better offense. You know, it's funny that you brought up Philip Lindsay because I was uh, really upset with myself that I had to narrow it down to five. I mean, we just we don't have enough time to talk about every single player, and Philip Lindsay was my number three on this list. You'll see who my next guys are that I, that I had ahead of him, but um, I took him off because I figured one of you guys would bring him up. I think it's pretty obvious he's going to move up in ADP. There's rumors now that, yeah, sure, Royce Freeman's going to get more touches, but you know what? They're just going to split out Philip Lindsay wide and turn him into a wide receiver at some point. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how the Broncos use him. I think he gets more touches than last year. And I think in the preseason, everyone will realize that. Tags, what do you think? Yeah, Philip Lindsay, uh, I released the article today, that article that we talked about in the podcast actually last week in regards to where the touches uh, took place for the running backs, where the targets took place, and what the expected fantasy output was for every single player. Um, I did running backs today, it'll be wide receivers on Wednesday. Philip Lindsay was number five on this list this year, okay? He scored 33.8 more fantasy points than he technically should have with where his carries and targets were at on the field. The only players he was behind, Melvin Gordon, Todd Gurley, Kareem Hunt, and Aaron Jones. Like, he was in front of Alvin Kamara in terms of points over expected. That's hard to do. He was over Christian McCaffrey. And the odd part about it is that he was actually a negative in the receiving aspect, but he was the second best rusher in all of football. So I think there's room for improvement with Philip Lindsay in the passing game. I think that there could be some positive touchdown regression there. Uh, but in the rushing aspect... I don't think that he did anything to lose the job. I, I know that Vic Fangio is a new head coach and, you know, like everybody's on an even playing field, but Philip Lindsay showed last year, he's a baller and he could play all three downs. Whereas Royce Freeman is more of a, a two down back that can contribute on third downs, but a great two down back. I, I think he's a better runner than Philip Lindsay, but I think both of them are going to be heavily involved. I mean, the Broncos were top five in rushing yards last year, man. Hey, speaking of Vic Fangio, Joe, I don't know if you heard this yet. Vic Fangio, he, he uh, banned music at their training camp. He said, he said, turn it off. Band and music. <laughs> My God, what is it? Footloose? What the hell's going on there? People can't dance. They can't listen to music. Vic Fangio sounds like a, a <laughs> PE teacher in the South Bronx. I, I swear to God. Like, I don't know where that, that is like the funniest name to me. I don't know. Hey, Mr. Fangio, I'm sorry. I don't have my gym clothes today. I'm sorry. I don't know. 
I just, <laughs> you know, band music. <laughs> come on, man. Like, is that the problem? Is that why the Broncos haven't been good or just because they haven't had a quarterback since Elway, basically? I'm for it. What? I'm for it. Let's ban oh, music, guys. <laughs> Maybe. I'm but- joking. Tags, relax, buddy. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to get kicked off. You're going to get kicked off this podcast in two minutes. <laughs> ban music. Ban fun. No oh. more fun. Now, you said ban video games. Oh, man. You can always count on Tags for a good reaction. Tags, who is your first guy that's going to move up ADP? Uh, okay, well, I'm going to go with a guy that legitimately, and I really don't care. People have told me to like, stop talking about him because they want well, him to stop moving up draft boards, but I'm going to do it because it's just stupid. AJ Green. Yeah, come on. Why? Why is he falling into the third round, sometimes fourth round in some of these drafts? It, it makes no- Not in my leagues. I'm taking him in the third. There's no way he's getting to the fourth in my ra- in my leagues. Buddy. I took him late second in an industry league uh, recently. I think it was a 211 pick I took him because I wasn't risking losing him because like, I wanted... He's a number one receiver you're getting at a massive discount. Uh, I mean proven production every single year I, I don't get it like this is one that legitimately there's nothing i have to give on stats like supporting aj green because there's nothing against him and i know people are going to talk about injuries there's been two times in his career where he's played fewer than like 13 games that's it so i mean injury prone stop yep you're right he missed seven last year he missed six in 2016 uh, he missed three games in 2014. Besides that, he's played every single game in his career. And when he's been healthy, he's been a top 10 wide receiver every single season. That's who A.J. Green is. I've got him number 21, just behind uh, Joe Mixon, Antonio Brown. I'd take him in the late second if I had to. I don't have to, so I'm waiting for the third. But, Tags, I disagree with you. I don't think he's going to move up in ADP. I think he's going to move down because as the more casual fans get in there, a lot of times there's so much recency bias, and they're going to say, what, what have you done for me recently, AJ, AJ Green? You've been hurt. You're a bum. I'm not drafting you until the fourth round. I think we're going to get an even better value. Joe, what do you think? No, I definitely think so. I think there's a general discontent with the Cincinnati Bengals offense, which is kind of funny because to me, this is an opportunity for a fresh start. The West Coast offense coming in, a new life. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes the addition by subtraction thing I I can't stand. But this is one of those cases where wouldn't you feel better if Marvin Lewis wasn't your head coach anymore? I feel like everybody's just going to take a nice (laughs) deep breath and go, oh, okay, great. It's it's like you have just a, a new lease on life. And I'm not saying that they're going to be brilliant. The defense is still dreadful, but that's not a bad thing for the value of a guy like A.J. Green or even Joe Mixon for that matter. So I'm actually I'm I'm in agreement with you guys. I think he's being a little undervalued this year. There have been some times in his career where he's had those, you know, the the floor of some games hasn't been great, but the ceiling has. Uh, But overall, I think that you can't let him slip to, you know, third, fourth round. I mean, that's just insane. He's he's still an outstanding talent. I think there's too much negative buzz around the Bengals right now. Okay, here's my first one, guys, and there's no doubt about it. His ADP is going to move, whether it's way up or just completely plummet. It depends on what we see in the preseason. I think it's more likely that it's going to move up, though, because if Todd Gurley is on the field and he looks like Todd Gurley, everyone's going to forget about this this narrative that, hey, he's got a, a bum knee, his career is going to be over soon, he's going to lose the starting job to Daryl Henderson before long, he's only going to play four games. If Todd Gurley's in the preseason, he looks good, he's going to be in the top four picks, guarantee it, maybe even number one overall by the time we're drafting next month. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I've planted my flag on the Black Book Show two weeks ago. We had Michael Fabiano on, we had a big conversation about it, and I told him, I was like, I'm done, I've, I've planted my, and I'm, I put my money where my mouth is, I just took him in Scott Fishbowl, he went in the second round, I took him there, I don't care, I'm going to take him, and at a certain point, you start looking at all these variables, you start thinking about Melvin Gordon and what he's doing with the contract, and you're not knowing, you start thinking about uh, Adam Gase's offense and Le'Veon Bell's value, and all of a sudden, it's like, well, how, after the first four guys, Everybody else has certain risks, so you might as well go with the guy that even if you take 15 to 20 percent of production off the top of him, he still probably finishes as a as RB five anyway. So let's just do it. Let's realize that maybe the negativity has gone so far to one angle that we need to reverse course a little bit and just re go back basically and reset our minds and look at how good he was the last two years and realize he is all world. Even if it just becomes very good, that's still a first round talent. Absolutely. Tags, I told you uh, last week, I had the sixth pick and I was wondering, who do I take? And then David Johnson fell to me, so I took him. I did another one where I got the sixth pick. I pulled the trigger on Todd Gurley in a best ball league. You know what? If he's healthy, I'm winning that league. Everyone else can deal with it. If he doesn't, so what? I plummet. Um, But I think there's a better chance than not that he's a league winner. 
I'm going to pull up my phone. I don't know how many best ball drafts that I've done so far, but I'm going to tell you my exposure to Todd Gurley. It's a lot. <laughs> and I'm okay. And I'm okay with it. I really am. And I actually <laughs> did a draft last night. It was the pros versus Joe's uh, that fantasy mojo does. And, um, I took uh, David Johnson at the number seven pick, and then on the way back, I took Todd Gurley in the second round. I mean, oh, that's so <laughs> stupidly amazing! And, and then the third round, I got AJ Green. So it's like I, I, I had like a dream start. Like there's, I, I really, and especially in a best ball format where it was just like, okay, I'll live with that girl. I'll live with the volatility there because Bobby, you and I talked about the top ten running backs, you know, a couple shows ago, and the fact that there, I mean, what are there? There's two running backs, Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey, guys that come with like pretty much zero risk. Everybody else has some sort of risk built into their, like into their projection. Yep. Agree with that. And I think both of those guys are due for some regression. Yeah, I don't even know. I think Kamara even comes with a little risk though. I mean, we haven't really seen a full season of him as the guy. That's the only thing I want to put out there about Kamara. And I'm not saying like he's going to fail, but I mean, there is a small caveat with him as well. I, I, I don't know. Maybe just seeing Gurley running will make everybody feel better in week two of the preseason. Everybody could take a breath, but I don't know how much even preseason he's going to see. I think there's going to be one of those things where if he continues to drop and he becomes a, a more and more of a bargain, that's great. But I hope that he rises a little bit just for just for the sake of, you know, <laughs> his value in fantasy football just getting retained a little bit. You know, with Kamara, I think they brought in the most efficient goal line running back in the last two years in Latavius Murray. And I think those touchdowns are, are going to go down. Now, we said that last year and he was just the cheat code. So we continue to put up a touch. Touchdown every, what, 13, 14 touches, something ridiculous. Uh, I do think Kamara has some regression coming his way. And McCaffrey, now that Cam Newton's shoulder is apparently good, he's not going to see 115 targets or whatever stupid number it was. Um, so I think he he could see some regression as well. There's there's no one that I love at the running back position this year. I love Gurley's value. Yeah, for sure. And by the way, I just pulled up my best ball. I have 36% of my teams have Todd Gurley. That is a ridiculously high percentage. The only other players that I have that high of are Aaron Rodgers, uh, Mitch Trubisky, and uh, A.J. Green. Uh, A.J. Green, actually, I have in 45%. I don't even know how that happens, but I do, and I'm okay with it. And then Marquise Goodwin I have at 36% as well, which is kind of odd. But um. I've got uh, I've got David Moore and Jeff Swaim <laughs> and over 80 percent of leagues right now. So take that. I definitely trying to diversify in best ball a little bit. Like I don't I don't aim to be 45 percent on anybody uh, or 36 <laughs> percent, I should say, because. Yeah, but they're handing you Todd Gurley. If people are handing you Todd Gurley, you have to be in on him now. That's it. It's over. I'm willing to take him at the beginning of the second round. And that's, you know, like even at the beginning of the best ball season, I was taking him at the end of the first. And now it's like beginning of the second. I'm like, OK, I'll, I'll take the risk. That's fine. So, Tex, have you bought anything from Pristine Auction? I seem to recall you got something from the Bears. I did. I got an Allen Robinson signed jersey. That a baby? How much was it? I paid less than $50. Less than $50 for the jersey. A signed jersey. Like with... including shipping and handling? Yes, or... including shipping. All Everything Holy included. Cow. Legit. It was just under 50 bucks, And um, it's literally sitting on the chair right next to me. And it's got sewn on letters and everything. So, yeah. Nice, I, dude. I mean, come on. It's it's replacing my Cutler jersey. I don't I don't really know if I can wear a signed jersey. It just feels odd. I've never done that. But for the <laughs> price, it's like if you really want to do that, I guess you can. Yeah, so Tags and I were talking about it, and we came up with the players for our bet. I'm not going to share tags quite yet, but I'm going with Corey Davis. So I'm looking right now for a signed Corey Davis helmet or jersey or football, and I'm, I'm keeping an eye on what the prices have been lately. A signed Corey Davis football, and it's like a really nice, cool-looking Titans football. 36 bucks it went for the other day. A signed Corey Davis Titans jersey, $24 was the cheapest I found in the last week. I'm going to get myself a nice value. And then next year, this time next year, it'll be like worth 124 and I'll be uh, rocking it all the time. I say that we share the bet on the air today and then we figure out the terms of the, okay. of the bet afterwards. Yeah. So you've got Calvin Ridley going up against my Corey Davis. And we're going to post a poll here so you guys can tell us who you think is going to win. Now, I know everyone's going to say Calvin Ridley because he's a little bit higher in <laughs> ECR and ADP, but I'm cool with being the underdog here because it's not, it's just going to be a lot better when I win again. Just like with uh, Christian McCaffrey and who was your guy last year? He wasn't as good, so I kind of forgot about him. It was Joe Mixon. Yeah, I I, I missed. I missed. Yep. So yeah, Tags did have to eat the buttered pizza. We'll have to. <laughs> we'll come to terms. Let us know what you think at Bobby Fantasy Pro and at Mike Tagliere NFL. Who's going to win and what the terms of the bet should be. So guys, check out Pristine Auction. There are so many values there. Everything's guaranteed authentic from only the most trusted sources, and there are hundreds. Sometimes thousands of items that are auctioned off every single day at pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. When you sign up at Pristine Auction, it's free to sign up. Don't worry. You only pay when you win a bid. You get $5 off if you enter Fantasy Pros as the registration code. Again, that's Fantasy Pros, all one word for the registration code at pristineauction.com. Real quick. So 
Joe, before we move on to your next one, I want to know who you think is going to win this bet. They both have to play at least 12 games and it's fantasy points per game. Oh man. You know, here's the problem. I think I, I like both these guys. I just wanted the caveat. These are two of my guys. So for different reasons. So I actually am very much, you know, you've, you've kind of merged my worlds together in a way here. I just <laughs> think it's going to be Ridley because of the kind of offense. Well, here's the thing. I just think by default, the offense that Ridley's in is going to be so damn good that he's going to have more fantasy points at the end of the year. But I think Corey Davis is going to return his ADP value. But if, if I'm talking about fantasy points, I'm probably going to lean towards Ridley. But I think it's going to be a lot closer than people realize. I actually think this is a good bet, boys. Holy cow. I'm looking right now at who should I draft. And uh, this is not good. So tags. 81% of the experts agree with you. Let it be known that the, the terms of the bet happened at Top Golf. Bobby and I were there waiting. We were, we were waiting for our thing. And like, and he's like, who are we going to bet on this year? He's like, we agree on a lot. He's like, so let me go through this. And he started going through and he offered. he Well, tags hates Corey Davis. Yeah. He offered me this. So I love Corey Davis, the talent. I hate the situation. And then he said, Calvin Ridley. I'm like, oh, I'm in. I'm in. Eighty-one percent of the experts say Calvin Ridley. Listen to this: ninety-five percent of the top experts say Calvin Ridley, and a hundred percent of the top wide receiver experts <laughs> say Calvin Ridley. This is not looking good for me, guys. But Bobby, if this was a golf bet to begin with, you should have a handicap like Corey Davis. You know, has a handicap because of his quarterbacks. <laughs> so I would say, like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I'll take the thirty percent target share and I'll I'll take it to the bank. All right. I think you got a fifteen point handicap or something like that. Whereas plus minus, I think you might be all right. But that's fine. I like where your head's at. Ouch, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Joe. all right, Joe. Who do you have number two? All right, my number two is Miles Sanders because I think there's going to be a whole lot oh. of volume. Now, I, I don't know if I like you like Miles Sanders or you think the public's going to like. No, him? I think the public's going to like him. I think it's not that I dislike him, but I once again go back to my disdain for Doug Peterson and his disdain for the run game and consistency. So I think what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to keep thinking too positively and they're going to keep thinking too much like, hey, this makes sense. Let's do this. And Doug Peterson is going to say, no, 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 no. I'm not a big fan of logic and I don't care about your fantasy team. <laughs> And he's going to kind of screw you on the back end. So that's my problem is I think Miles Sanders is going to have some moments in some preseason games, especially if he might even get in the game when some other, you know, less than stellar number one defenses are in there in some preseason. He might have a couple highlight reel runs that are going to change perspective. And everyone's going to see, man, this guy is really explosive. He can do a lot of things. And that's going to absolutely ruin him from a fantasy value perspective. So I think it's Miles Sanders. He's 101 right now. I think by the time we get to mid-August, he's going to be probably in the high 80s, if not higher. And I think that's going to be too high for me. So I've mentioned this before, guys. You can go to fantasypros.com slash rankings to see ECR and ADP on the same page. And the difference is ADP, general public, is drafting him at running back 32. The expert consensus has him at 38. I've got him at 39, and I think that's pretty telling. The guys who are researching all this for a living are saying, don't draft Miles Sanders where his ADP is. Now, Tags, I know you agree with me. Where do you have him ranked? Yeah, Sanders is someone that's that's slowly sliding down the boards, and then the them re-signing Darren Sproles hurts it even more. Uh, Darren Sproles is the only running back that has uh, actually played meaningful snaps for Doug Peterson. Like, there's, I, I, I want to say that he's the only running back under Doug Peterson who has played more than 43 snaps in a game, um, which is, it, that's so telling. So, Miles Sanders, for me, he's down at, like, 34 right now, and I, I want to move him down even further, but the issue is, like, I'm waiting to see how things play out. I know he missed some time in the offseason training programs, Resigning Sproles again that hurts I agree I just feel like nobody else cares Mike yeah that's true I mean people are going to see him in preseason like no <laughs> Joe you might be right in the preseason I think like I, he was actually I did an article this was like legit like a, a month or a month and a half ago saying players whose ADP will rise and he was on that list because I said people are going to see him in the preseason and they're going to love his three down skill set but the problem is is that you know we're talking I actually probably agree in terms of his ADP it might move up but it's already pretty high at 32 um, but at the same time, we're talking about whether or not he's worth it there. And uh, I think all of us would answer to this no with Darren Sproles and Jordan Howard th then coming in and stealing some goal line work too. So guys, Latavius Murray's going four spots after him, not overall in, in running backs. He's the RB 36 off the board. I've got him at 21 and Latavius Murray's directly filling in for Mark Ingram, who was drafted in the top 50 last year, even though he was suspended for four games. So I'm looking at who should I draft? And even though the public is way different on this one on Sanders side, uh, the experts are very much on Latavius Murray's side, 76 to 24 percent. I've sorted by the most accurate experts. Pat Fitzmorris, number one for running backs, 25 for Murray, 34 for Sanders. Dalton Del Don is right there as well. Mike, you're in the you're in the top running back uh, crew as well, and you've got him seven spots higher than Miles Sanders. Uh, just guys, pass on Miles Sanders. Go get Latavius Murray; he'll be there. Who do you have at number two tags? 
Don't take my guy. <laughs> Number two, I'm going to actually do a combination of players here. I'm going to do uh, Allen Robinson and uh, Alshon Jeffrey. I feel like those two should be in the same exact conversation. I feel like they're being extremely undervalued, and I think people are going to wake up and realize when I share this stat, okay, there were just 14 wide receivers all of last year who saw more than 120 targets. I think everybody can agree that Allen Robinson and Alshon Jeffrey can absolutely reach that territory, and nobody would blink. It's not. It wouldn't be shocking at all to see either of them there. Okay, here's another fact. Uh, of those 14 wide receivers, the only wide receiver in that group who did not finish as a top 16 fantasy wide receiver was Jarvis Landry. Um, Jarvis Landry finishes wide receiver 19, being wildly inefficient. So I know people are looking for the sexy picks and they're looking for the breakout stars like the Chris Godwin, who's, uh, by the way, the number two wide receiver on his team. Mike Williams, who, by the way, is the number two wide receiver on his team. Calvin Ridley, the number two wide receiver on his team. These guys are legit target hogs like these are the number one receivers in their offense i have no idea why they've fallen down to the wide receiver 27 28 uh but their adp is going to move up when people realize i don't think so man uh i agree that they should move up but i'm looking at the difference between adp and ecr right now and alshon jeffrey's at 23 ecr 29 adp the general public hates him they're like this guy's injury prone what's he done for me nothing and when the more casual fans get in there i think it'll be more exaggerated Allen robinson's a little bit less he's a 28 ecr 30 adp but i think they're going to go backwards i think we're going to get more of a value what do you think joe you're the tiebreaker here uh, well look I, I think right now where they're at is exactly where i want them to be if they start moving up it's going to be a little bit dicier i i just think and and look a lot of this has to do with do you believe that trubisky can right some of the wrongs that happened to him in the second half i don't know how healthy he was in the second half of the season uh, and I think Montgomery will help that offense overall, just move the ball better. But, uh, you know, it's it's tough because Alshon Jeffrey has had a lot of injuries and he has had a lot of issues. And you're waiting to see if Carson Wentz can come back and be the guy that you want him to be that he was two years ago. So a lot of this hangs on. I think their ADP hangs on the quarterbacks. I think as people start seeing these quarterbacks look good in preseason, I think you'll see a little bit of the rest of that value trickle down to those guys and start to elevate them just a tad. But I don't know if they can press much further than they are. I think they've already just about hit their glass ceiling in terms of value. All right. My number two is uh, it's based on the Yahoo rankings. So as I mentioned on fantasypros.com slash rankings, you can select the experts that you want. So I just went in to pick experts and I sorted by site. Yahoo's at the very bottom. Liz Loza, Dalton Del Don, Scott Pianowski, Brad Evans, Andy Behrens, and I selected all five of those, nobody else. I want to see what the Yahoo experts think about their rankings because their rankings are going to drive ADP very much. And I'm seeing Derrick Henry right now, how high he is, number 18 overall, just behind Michael Thomas, just ahead of Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown, Dalvin Cook, Damian Williams, Marlon Mack, and I think that the general public is going to see these rankings and it's going to drive ADP, and Derrick Henry's ADP is going to soar. Wow. I like Derrick Henry, and I actually like Derrick Henry, but that's not, I don't like it that much. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I like all of those Yahoo people more than I liked Derrick Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I love all those guys, yeah. The Yahoo crew, those are my those are my people. Like I love I love each and every single one of them. I've met them all. They're awesome. Um, but as for Derrick Henry, I, nah. They've got him over Todd Gurley right now. Boo. I know. Well, Evans is Evans is driving that clown car. Evans has uh, <laughs> I, I, th I think I think Evans has him at as his RB 22 or something like that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. nuts. I mean, they, you know, uh, Evans is coming on for the Bold Predictions podcast later on. I think we're doing it middle next month. That is going to be so much fun. I cannot that's wait. always one of my favorites of the year. And any episode Brad comes on is one of my favorites, too. So it's going to be like bonus. Yeah. No offense to you, Joe. No, no, none taken. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe, why don't you, uh, you do one more and then we're going to do a lightning round where we just name a couple guys who we think will move up. So uh, pick the one you most want to elaborate on and we'll go from there. Okay, my number three is uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling because I think MVS is going to start moving up boards. I think the I think the word is going to start getting out on him. He was one of the best in terms of creating separation last year. He was one of the best in terms of uh, looking for target share and things like that outside of the the top guy in that offense, Adams. It's just a matter of actually making it work. And I think some of it might have been some of the negativity you read about, well, there were some rumors that he was running the routes that McCarthy wanted to run <laughs> instead of the routes that Aaron Rodgers wanted him to run and certain things like that. And if everyone's in line this year, it seems like it would be nuts to think that MVS can't be an outstanding value right now. He's at 132 overall. 
And I think as we get closer, as people start to get more familiar with him too, I think that's the other thing. I don't think a lot of people were familiar with him last year, just the general football public. And I think that they saw the name on the waiver wire. They saw it added and drop some and, and back and forth. But I think this year they're going to start taking notice. And I think there's going to be a lot of people discussing him as a quote unquote sleeper, which might kill his value a little bit, but I think it will get higher than 132 right now. You know what I've noticed, guys, is that uh, best ball seems to be more competitive than other drafts going on right now because everyone's playing for uh, for money, right? And so I think ADP has been following the best ball ADP. ADP is always ahead of the curve. Right now, overall ADP, Marquez Valdez-Scantling is wide receiver 46. I saw yesterday on draft, wide receiver 34. He is going to skyrocket. You nailed it, man. He's going ahead of Geronimo Allison right now. He's going ahead of Golden Tate, Larry Fitzgerald. Um, Dante Pettis, Marvin Jones, even Corey Davis. Yeah, he's, he's going, and I think that's because best ball people also tend to be the people who are a little bit more prepared and have done the research already, and that's why they're playing best ball. So I think you can learn a lot from that ADP. I think you can actually learn a lot of where things are trending. I would tend to agree. Uh, this is one of those battles I'm watching in the preseason because I want to know who's starting in two wide receiver sets, and that's the receiver that I'm going to move up my rankings. I thought it was Geronimo Allison. I, I, it makes more sense to me that it would be Geronimo Allison, um, but if Valdez Scantling is out there in two wide rec- receiver sets with Rodgers during the preseason, you better believe I'm going to move him ahead of Allison. I, I like them both a lot, and I'm with you, Tags. Whoever it is, I want him. I might want the other guy too. And we've got something else on the fantasypros.com slash rankings where you can sort by standard deviation to see like how big the difference is uh, between the top tier uh, experts on him, the bottom tier experts on him. And nobody is higher in the top 50 wide receivers than Marquez Valdez Scantling. His standard deviation sits at 11.9. The next highest, let's see, it's uh, Julian Edelman at 7.4, I believe. So he is way up there. Experts differ so much on him. And Joe, I think you're ahead of the curve. Well, let's hope. Let's hope. And, you know, that's why I like drafting him now. <laughs> He's getting all this value now. Can we draft now? What time is it? What time is it? Let's draft right now. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> all right, Tags, who's your third one? All right, so I'm going to do another combination. Uh, these are the last two players I really, really wanted to mention, and uh, it's a couple of quarterbacks. It's Jameis Winston and Kirk Cousins. So um, Jameis Winston's ADP is QB 16, uh, Kirk Cousins QB 21, and I I dude, the, don't don't give it away. These are my guys in my super flex league. Don't move their ADP. Up. I think people need to learn how to do math. Um, and I'm not <laughs> kidding at all. So when you have like, let's do the math here. If you have Mike Evans as the number eight fantasy wide receiver, you have Chris Godwin as the number 20 receiver. You have OJ Howard as the number four fantasy tight end. How the hell is Jameis Winston the, the quarterback 16? Okay, Kirk Cousins. You have Adam Thielen as the number 11. He's going to lose his job, man, don't you know? You have Stephon Diggs as the number 14. Y'all love Delvin Cook. Like, it makes absolutely zero sense. So it's either you need to, if you want to keep Jameis and Kirk <laughs> where they're at, you need to lower the expectations for the other guys. Or if you want to keep those guys up there, you need to realize that Winston and Cousins need to move up draft boards. I've been seeing Blaine Gabbert drafted in best ball leagues lately because people really actually what? think... Jameis Winston, if he lost his job to Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's going to lose it to Blaine Gabbert, too, of course. That's that's ridiculous. That's what I think that's what people are thinking. There's no other explanation. See, Tags, I don't know where there is for him to go in the way, because, like, who are we bumping out then? That's that's the problem. It's like, you know, are you bumping out, like, Mayfield and Wentz? Brady? Well, Brady was already out. That's fair. Well, I'm bumping out everyone, man. I've got Jameis Winston QB6. He's ahead of uh, Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, Drew Brees. See, putting him ahead of Cam is tough, just because if Cam's healthy, he's such a fantasy quarterback, so to speak. You know, and I'm, in case you can't tell, I'm doing air quotes with my mouth there. <laughs> fantasy quarterback. But yeah, I mean, gosh, it's it's tough. It's tougher than them to crack it. I think Wentz is losing some appeal this year. Like, I don't think he's going to be running very much coming off the ACL. Like, he, like he's going to turn more of into somewhat of a pocket passer. Now, he has Alshon and Deshaun Jackson and, you know, Zach Ertz. And that's fine. I mean, Wentz is fine. I don't think that, you know, all the experts talking about Jameis Winston are going to be able to change the, the narrative about him enough. The narrative is he's a bad quarterback. He doesn't belong as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Therefore, he must not be good at fantasy. It's math, though. Like, it's math. I know, but most people don't know math, man. But again, he should be ahead of Roethlisberger, Rivers, and Brady, like, first off. Like, that's hands down. Like, those guys he should be oh, ahead, he's of. ahead of. he's ahead of Brady for sure right now. I think absolutely. I agree. No doubt about it, I agree. I don't think the general public agrees. I'm not talking about the people listening to our podcast. These people are serious about fantasy football. I'm talking about the people in family and friend leagues who say, Jameis Winston's not a good quarterback. Kirk Cousins doesn't have a high touchdown rate, which I don't, I don't even know that that's a thing, but he doesn't score touchdowns, so he must not be good. That's, that's just the way that people think, but... 
but they're iconic players too in people's minds. And that's very hard to shake from the general public, that notion of Tom Brady, that notion of Ben Roethlisberger. They're cemented in their brains. So, and look, I mean, you also look at statistically speaking, you know, when Roethlisberger's thrown for 5,000 yards, it's hard not to go, well, why would I take the chance with Jamison Winston? But I think with Jamison Winston, I think you look at it and you see if, if you believe with everything that he's done so far in his career is under the worst circumstances. What if we gave him an offensive mind running the helm who was at possibly the best circumstance? How good could he be potentially? And yeah, it's a little bit of buying into it, but you're right. If you think all these other things are going to be good, then doesn't Winston have to be good too? I actually encourage anyone listening right now, if you can find me a situation (laughs) where two players were being drafted as top 20 receivers and a a tight end was top four and the quarterback finish worse than top as a top 12 quarterback, I'd I'd love to hear that because I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's even a possibility. Um, So it's either adjust your rankings with the receivers and tight ends or raise the rankings with the quarterbacks. All right, guys, I'm going to give my third here in just a second. Tags, I totally agree with that, by the way, man. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about a sponsor, Roman. So guys, you know you're terrible at taking care of your health, whether it's a knee injury, bad back, or something worse. Guys are just usually more comfortable rubbing some dirt on it than seeing a doctor. I'm guilty of this myself. The reason I tore my Achilles tendon is because I didn't go get help when my calf was really bothering me, right? The same is true for people with erectile dysfunction. Studies show 70% of guys who experience ED don't get treated for it. Thankfully, Roman created an easy way to chat with your doctor online. With Roman, you can get medical care for ED, if appropriate, from the comfort and privacy of your own home. You can handle everything online in a convenient, discreet manner. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash FantasyPros and complete an online visit. If your doctor decides the treatment would be appropriate, you can prescribe genuine medication that can be delivered in discreet packaging right to your door with free two-day shipping. Guys, go talk to your doctor. Erectile dysfunction can be tough to tackle, but it's really important to get checked out. With Roman, it's easy to connect with a doctor. Just go to GetRoman.com slash FantasyPros to get a free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash fantasy pros for a free visit to get started get roman.com slash fantasy pros all right guys my number three is kiki qt and it's not so much that i think everyone is aware of who he is it's just that will fuller was hurt in week seven last year his i don't know if he's going to be ready for week one i don't know if he's going to play at all in the preseason deandre hopkins is now on the pup list it's just for now but people are going to see this and they're going to think hold on a second kiki qt is going to get a lot of targets from deshaun watson i think i should probably move him up my draft board what do you think joe Look, I, I like QT as the talent, and this is one of those addition by subtraction ones that scare me. You know, sometimes it makes sense, sometimes I'm a little leery of it because I, I, I Will Fuller was just a touchdown machine the last two years when he's on the field with him. Now the trouble is on the field. That's the key phrase. I think having shares of him is good, QT. I, th- I think that's definitely makes sense. I think the ADP makes sense. But if you're talking about a guy who potentially could rise because of these circumstances you're talking about, absolutely. I definitely think he's one of these guys that's got probably a big arrow pointing up. And the more shows like this, or we keep talking about him, is going to continue to drive it up. I think there's a there's a certain level it's going to hit. It won't pass. But I think it's going to be higher than it is right now by the time we get to, let's say, mid-August is that mid to late August, that prime draft season. It's going to be higher. I think you're high on QT, but the public is going to, he's still a number three receiver on a team. That's the issue. No, he's not, man. He was never the wide receiver three. He, Will Fuller was the wide receiver three when they played together. It wasn't even close. Do you think Fuller's going to be drafted as the wide receiver three though? That's what I'm saying. Like public perception. Like, no, he's not. Even if he doesn't play at all in the preseason. I mean, he's, he's what? He's uh 10 months away, 10, nine months removed from a torn ACL. You think people are actually going to draft him when they see he's not playing the preseason? Well, Cooper Cup's not going to play in the preseason. He's being drafted as the wide receiver 22 right now. You're right, and I think that's going to change too. Good point. Uh, seriously, ACLs don't even concern me anymore. Like, obviously, <laughs> if, it, if, if you're like seven months removed from a torn ACL, yeah, that's not great. Like, that's something that's going to require some time. But, I mean, if they start telling me that these guys are going to miss, they're going to start the season on the pup, and they're going to miss six games, or they're going to miss a couple games, that's when I'll start moving them down. But modern medicine, when it comes to ACLs, dude, it's legit. I don't care. That's fair, man. And I agree. I do think the general public thinks of QT as the wide receiver three. I think it will become clear in the preseason. That's not the case, though. So, uh, Joe, I've got two more names. I'm just going to name them really quick. Russell Wilson, because he's a big name quarterback and people can't look past those touchdown rates. His was gaudy last year. Not going to keep up. And then David Montgomery, um, number one, because Chicago optimism is the very finest in the world. They love their sports teams, believe in their guys, and there's a lot of them. So that's going to drive up ADP+. Plus, you know, David Montgomery's filling in for Jordan Howard, who has got the job done over the last few years, and Montgomery's substantially better. I think they're going to realize that in the preseason. He's a great fit for this offense. I love David Montgomery, and I think everyone's going to wake up to that. Joe, 
Do you have a couple more names? Yeah, I'm a big fan. No, I'm a big fan of Montgomery, too. I've had him almost everywhere so far, so I haven't been in a lot of drafts with a lot of Chicago people, I guess. The uh, last two that I had were uh, Dante Foreman and uh, Dante Moncrief. Two Dantes. Different spellings, obviously, different pronunciations, but nonetheless. Moncrief and Foreman, these two guys, I think, as time goes on, we're going to see, I think, in preseason, whether or not James Washington steps up into the role that a lot of people perceive his talent to be, and if he does not look good in that role... In week one, two of the preseason where he starts to falter, you get in bad press coming out. I think you can see that Moncrief ADP just skyrocket potentially. We're talking about that on the Black Book show a lot this week, the last two weeks actually with our guests. That seemed to be a topic that they brought up and we kind of trenched out and discussed. And I think Moncrief's one of those guys. And Foreman's another one too. You know, yeah, third time's a charm maybe. I don't know. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Third time, I don't know. I guess I just don't have any shame anymore. So I I feel like they don't want Lamar Miller. I feel like they're going to do everything they can to give Foreman a legit shot here. And even if they both end up with a role in this offense, I, I think that Foreman can do enough in that role to actually be a decent player in a 14-team league. So I think Foreman's another one of these guys that people are going to start buying back into the more they physically see him on the football field. By the way, I mentioned standard deviation earlier. Of the top 100 wide receivers, no one has a higher <laughs> yeah. standard deviation than Dante Moncrief. 100%, I'm sure. Tags, now you're going to fight him about uh, Deontay Foreman, right? I don't think he was like particularly great before his injury, and, and I there, there has been no... Pl- let loose, Tags. Let loose, baby. Bring it. Right before, right before a fantasy feud, we need to get it heated up here. He's just saying that basically people are going to see him on the field and it's going to inspire some confidence in people. Like, that's all I think he's saying. I don't think that he's saying that Deontay Foreman's any good because he wasn't very good before. He was fine before his injury. He was like a guy that could potentially be a player in the NFL. Um, but then after an Achilles, no one has ever successfully returned to an elite tier of a performance. Like, you know, we've seen much better talents go through an Achilles tear and like not come back from this injury. So, you know, Deontay Foreman wasn't great before. I think he's a career backup is what he is. And he might be, but the thing is, that when do the Texans start looking forward from Lamar Miller? I think they're going to draft a running back next year. And they very well might, but I think in the interim, they might look at it and go, okay, well, let's see what we've got here once and for all. And if he can play, let's get him out there and let's see, because maybe that will change our perspective of where we want to go in the draft or how late we want to wait for a running back potentially. So again, I'm not saying it's a good move. I'm saying this is a guy that's going to start skyrocketing ADP wise. All right, Joe, are you ready for this, man? My pride rests in your hands. All right, I gotta set the camera though. If we're gonna start shooting, <laughs> okay. right? I gotta gotta turn it on now. You gotta you gotta get the face involved. So hang on one sec. <laughs> I'm gonna run go to, uh, go to the bathroom real quick. Go for it, Excuse man. Me one sec. As long as it's not number three. He didn't hear that. It must have been. He had to run. All right, now I can defend your honor. <laughs> okay. Tags went to the restroom. I don't know if you heard that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> get one, you lose one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Why don't you give me all the questions <laughs> for real? <laughs> You got Twitter, just just, just <laughs> which is Oh man, that would be so funny if you just whooped him. <laughs> like you just say one word and I'll just buzz. <laughs> the first one just to throw him off. Do it. I'm game. I like a good prank as much as the next guy. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? And I'll it. just say Joe. And I'll just say the first thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's uh Wait, let, number one answer for the first question. Yeah, let let's do that. And I'm not going to make it a number one answer. We'll just put you on, on the board. Actually, I'll I'll let you totally guess if you want because then tags will have to decide if he's on the board. But I'm going to give you the position. Okay, so the first question is about quarterbacks, and so just buzz in with a quarterback. And if you get it right, that would be amazing. And uh, just te- yeah, text text me the number one just because that's what's funny. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh man, it's going to be tags. Are you with us? I am. Okay, just a second. You ready to go? Yes, I am. Thank you for bearing with me. Ready to roll, boys? I'm ready. Are you ready? <clears throat> All right. Did you just give the Joe the answers when I went out of here? Is that what happened? <laughs> no. Oh. No, we were just talking about something else. Shenanigan. I don't, I don't no. believe this crap. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Dude, I just got back two seconds uh, before you. I'm yeah, he sure really did. you did. <laughs> he was like... He was like, "All right, I'm ready to defend your honor," and he's like waiting, like, "Okay, are you gonna, are you gonna start talking?" And I was, was like, "Dude, Tags yeah. just went to the restroom." So. Well, that's a hell of an idea. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, that would be really <laughs> funny if uh, if you went that. and I gave Joe like all the answers or whatever, and then he whooped you. I don't trust. I don't trust either of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> all right, guys. I've got my microphone now. All right, I'm rolling. Let's go. 
All right, guys, we're here for the third Fantasy Feud competition. Tag's already won the first two, probably because he cheated, because that's what Tag's does. He's not going to win this one, though. I'm rooting for Joe. Joe, my reputation is on the line. I don't want to have to read a poem to Tag's, so please win this one. Uh, we've got some really good questions here. You can watch on YouTube at youtube.com slash fantasypros, and I've actually got my Green Bay Packers jersey on because Tag's is a Bears fan, and, uh, you know, I wanted him to know that I'm against him. Tag's, how do you feel of, about that? What is this crap? <laughs> I mean, I, first off, Joe should be given, like, a handicap because obviously like he he was beaten so oh, bad last time it, 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 it oh, wasn't even all man. that close so the thing is so we did actually give him a handicap last time and he lost you did and i still got pwned that's fine yeah i, I hear it i hear your tags all right you call me on the table you know you're real tough you're real tough over you know over the internet you're a real tough guy so let's let's get over this let's do it now yeah now i feel like it's game of thrones like all of a sudden i'm bombie's champion uh, and now it's you know all right all right, let's hey, by it. the way, if you guys enjoy this on YouTube, uh, please hit that subscribe button because we're trying to get to grow our base on YouTube and uh, let people know that we're out there doing fun videos like this and helping people learn about uh, fantasy football. So if you guys haven't seen uh, Family Feud, I, I would imagine everyone did. But, you know, we've got a head to head round. So we've got four questions where uh, there's six answers and whoever buzzes in first gets a chance to win the bid and uh, and decide if they want to play or pass. And then they have to name all six. If they don't get it, the other guy gets a chance to steal the points. And then after that, we're going to do a fast money round. Um, so whoever is not going is going to turn off their headphones. Uh, Tags is probably going to cheat, though. So we'll see what happens. Joe, I need you to win. You ready for this, man? I will do my best, especially now that Tags called me on the carpet. Now I'm pissed. Let's go. <laughs> Tags, is there, uh, is there anything you wanted to add to the rules? Did I miss anything? I, I, I don't think so. I just love that Joe's all fired up now. I am. You, you sufficiently stirred the pod. I was, I was embarrassed <laughs> last time. And again, I'll go back to what I said in the podcast before that we just did, that I feel like it wasn't so much me as the public let me down. I had a lot of good answers. You did. the public, come on. You need some better public to answer these questions for you. I, I think your answers were a lot better than Tags. All I hear is, all I hear is excuses, guys. That's all I hear. <laughs> it's, well, good, because that's what I'm giving. I'm giving a ton of them. God, I got to win at something. All right. All right, guys. So we're going to start with the head-to-head -head round, and you're going to buzz in with your name. You remember from last time, Joe, you're going to need to beat Tags because he's ready. Okay? Yes, my name is Joe. I scream Are you ready for Joe. this? You can buzz yeah. in as soon as you want. You don't even have to wait for the end of the question if you don't want. Are you ready for this? Right, but you don't, you don't finish reading it if we buzz in before then, just to be clear. Oh, okay. So, okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I still want to hit something when I buzz. I'll just hit my leg. Just, okay. All right. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah, let's go. Name a quarterback that becomes Joe. Okay. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go on. He's got to answer. Go ahead. About okay. Dak, Dak Prescott. Who's your quarterback? I can name a quarterback. Or who are you going with? Dak Prescott. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Number one answer on the board. Dak oh, Prescott, yeah! baby. 18 points. I named a quarterback. Look at that. All right. Now, do you finish the question before I play or pass? Are you are you going to play or pass? <laughs> that was the number one? Yeah, it was number one. Look at that. Oh, things are warm as turning, Tex. <laughs> oh. Te Joe, are you going to play or pass? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to play. Let's let's play this one out. Here. Okay, let's do it. All right. So here's the question. Right, quarterback. All right. Tags, how are you feeling right now, man? I feel like you guys cheated. <laughs> of course you think that. With you. I don't even know the question. How yet. could we cheat? The question was name a quarterback. I'm sitting here in Southern one. Illinois and Joe's all the way across the country. If I was cheating with anyone, it would be with the other guy in Illinois. I went or to the, the guy bathroom. he does a podcast with every day. Yeah. I went to the bathroom for, for, for a couple moments and I came back and you guys were just sharing something. And I went to go turn my camera on. I told you, I got to go set up the camera. I don't believe you guys. What's the question? All right. We'll see. I, I mean, tags, you, you said give him a <laughs> handicap and I didn't even do that. And now you're complaining that you think he has a handicap. Yeah, wow. Oh my God. Holy somebody's cow. Right you, now. It, you, so he's playing, right? You're playing? Yeah, he's yeah, playing. playing. Here, here's the question. Name a quarterback. I control now. I'm going to bury you <laughs> <laughs> and here's the question name a quarterback that becomes non-startable in fantasy if he loses his number one receiver so joe this was not one you wanted to play it's going to be really tough i'm going to repeat the question really quick for those of you guys listening at home a quarterback that becomes non-startable in fantasy if he loses his number one receiver how many answers are there? There's six answers, and I'm going to say this. There's some super flex guys that play fantasy football, so. Well, it's got to be, yeah. I mean, it, I'm going to say, I'll tell I think Winston's probably on that list. People feel like that. I, if Mike Evans goes you know, down. I play this beforehand just to see, you know, what it's going to be like. And Jameis Winston was the first name I said. He's not on the list. Oh, here right, we go again. Strike. We're we one good names. It was a great, right, it was a I, great I guess, Joe, but the, the public was wrong. Yeah, all right. All right. So you got one, uh, you've got one miss. You can miss two more, and then it goes to Tags. All right, there to we go. Tom Brady. 
Tom Brady's Tom not Brady. on the list. Two in a row wrong. Oh, my God. This <laughs> How is, did this you guess Dak Prescott and then you failed when you actually knew the question? Uh, well, you know, maybe I'm better off just, you know, not thinking. I'm overthinking it. Okay, so don't think. Just name so, a quarterback. Forget the question. All right. All right, Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger, number two on the board, 16. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Okay, all right. So now, now, all right, so now I've got to really attach the, uh, let's see, uh, Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, number six mm-hmm. on the board, five points. You got mm. Prescott, 18. Big Ben, 16. Andy Dalton, five. You've got three more to get. Can you get them in a row? Uh, probably not, but I just got to get at least <laughs> one more to put some pressure on tags. That's what I got to do. Uh... I don't think this is true, but I think it's going to be perception. How about Philip Rivers? Wrong. It moves on to okay. tags. Tags, I'm going to tell you All the right. question again. There you go, yep. tags. Name a quarterback that becomes non-startable in fantasy if he loses his number one receiver. We've already got Dak Prescott, Big Ben, and Andy Dalton off the board. Can you get number three, four, or five? To steal all the points. Uh, I'm gonna. This is a public thing, and because I, I don't think he's very startable even before then. But I'm gonna say Derek Carr. Derek Carr is the number three Woo-hoo! answer on the board yeah. for 15 points. That gives Tag 54 points. Tag <laughs> Joe, you got to pick it up, man. This is not okay. Uh, that's, again, how, <laughs> if Julian Edelman goes down, how is Tom Brady a really good quarterback in fantasy still? I don't understand. Same. What else is there left? I mean, come on. Oh, By like- the way, <laughs> uh, the other answers on the board. Number five, Drew Brees, seven points. Matt Ryan, number four, ten points. That's a terrible. Matt Ryan still can do it. I, I disagree with that completely. I actually like that one. Uh, big Drew Brees, yeah, I, I think that probably makes sense as well. The one that doesn't make sense to me at all was Derek Carr. That surprised me so much. See, Who's Drew starting one- Derek Carr? He's not even uh, a QB2. Hey, I, sa- I said it. I said. I know. I knew you were the cat. But caveat. like you're That's cheating fair. somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm All right, I, I just don't understand question. how let's Tags continues to do this. Like he's guessing the the worst ones and he somehow gets points. Okay, number two. Here we go. Buzzing with your name. Name a food that is an essential part of any draft party. Tags. Joe. Tags beat him. Chips and dip. <sighs> Chips and dip is the number three Ooh. answer on the board. So Joe, you get a chance to beat it. Twenty two points for Tags. Beer is not a food. Oh, but well, it's on the board. It <laughs> it's on the board with 10 points. Man, when I did this, I was like, I got all the other ones so quick. And then it was like, beer? What are you guys talking about? Did you not read the question? Which one's worth more? 32 points are taken. Tags, you got the better answer. So you passing or playing? I will play. There, you need four more. All right. So and I almost just named the number one. All right. So so pizza, <laughs> pizza is it. definitely on there. Pizza is on there. 26. Right. Number two answer on the board. All right. Uh, so we have pizza, beer, chips, uh, buffalo wings. Buffalo wings, number one. Actually, you know what? Uh, the answer is wings, so I'm not going to count You're that counting one. it. I'm just kidding, man. 29 points, number one answer on the board. Can you get number five and number six? Um, number five and six. You're going to have to bu- – I feel like I shouldn't be taking this too much time. Um, crap. Uh, tr- yeah, I was gonna say I can't, I can't, like I can't take that there. much time. Um, yep, that was too much. All right, you're running out of time again for your next one. <laughs> All right, um, I will say, oh, this is tough. Guacamole. Wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't no. like that answer, but it was one. That's gotta yeah. be in the tags. Chips and dip tags is pantheon, so right? afraid of guacamole. By the way, we were there. I sh- actually, you know what? I'm not gonna I tell this guacamole. story because tags, you're running out of time. I'm not giving you any time to answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're you're giving time to think. Don't give him time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Last chance. Uh, veg- a veggie dip, veggie tray. Wrong, yeah. dude. We're talking about. I know. I, how many I, different dips? I'm telling you, I, chips and dips. Already. I just literally said a food that I started thinking about that you know wives might oh, bring or man. something. I don't know. I was I was so worried. You know what? Those are good answers if it was like a, a book club, shut up for women or something. But we're talking about <laughs> dudes, man. We're talking about dudes who don't care about their bodies. All right, all right. So you got you got a chance here. And if Tags took number five, which I think is entirely, you know, you can guess this one. If he took it, there was no way you were getting number six. I cannot believe hey, number six you was just, answered hey, by hey, multiple host, people. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Joe, I here's a, your I chance. A, I, need a, I need a clarification on something about sure. chips. Does chips also include pretzels? Chips is all taken. Nachos, okay. chips was the, the number three answer. And pretzels is in, not, is in chips. Is that, that encompass it. I need, pretzels, I need is not, to pretzels is not part of chips. Oh, dude. Okay. No, yeah, that doesn't mean I, I'm going to say it. I just want to know where I'm. I, I feel like this is cheating. Well, that's fine. Handicap. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's go. Slackers. Yeah. All right. So what were the what's the what are the answers tags already gave? Just Wings, so I don't do pizza, them. nachos slash chips, beer, alcohol. Um, I'm gonna say pretzels. <laughs> he got it. That was the number yeah! six answer. <laughs> 
89 points to Joe oh, here. So man. Joe has That's a, a lot commanding more lead. Yeah. 89 to 54. Tags, you are slacking, man. Don't start with me. Can you believe it's that right. pretzels was answered by multiple people? Joe, are you trying to tell me that you eat pretzels at a draft party? I've never had pretzels at well, a draft party. I think party. if where there's beer, there's pretzels. That, what was the other one? Like nuts or something like that? Burgers and hot dogs, guys. See, burgers was where I was going next. So either way, okay. I was going to get you tagged. Yeah. So just, you know, in all fairness, I was going to say burgers or sliders. That was my... Uh, that was my thing. But that's okay. Tags, don't worry. I'm I'm an absolutely swell. Well, thanks bear, to my so friend Joe. We usually have brisket uh for our for our home oh, draft. And yum, so, so basically dude. I mean that would have been an answer for me, but I know that you know ninety five percent of people don't have that luxury. In my opinion, you do not eat at a draft party. If you're eating, you're not paying attention. Probably wears a diaper actually to his drafts. You got to. I mean, if you're doing an auction draft, if you're doing an auction draft and it's going to be three oh, hours, you can't get up and go to the bathroom. What if somebody brings up David Moore you and you miss it? You take a no, break. No, you don't take or a break. You, you take a break you do like, and people uh, take and advantage Dumb and Dumber of you. where he's got the bottle and you just do your business in the bottle. You just poop in your pants if you have to. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, no excuses in fantasy football tough room. drafts. That's a tough room. I don't remember the last time I actually got together with everybody outside of like Flex League to really draft. It's so much party. fun, isn't it? It is, but it yeah. never happens anymore, I feel like. All right. It's a lost art. Number three question tags. You've got some right, catching yeah, up to I do. I got dude. it. Name an NFL team from which you would consider owning three or more players on the same fantasy team. Tags. All right. Oh, the Chiefs. Chiefs, number one answer. 18. Points. All right. I will play. You're playing. All right. Let's All do right. it. All uh, right. The Texans. Wrong. Oh. How many teams do we have, by the way? Uh, six teams. You need to get six teams, and the Texans are not one of those that's, six tags. That's, Bad that's, first That's kind of ridiculous, actually. Well, yeah, welcome to my world of the public. I mean, wrong. it happens. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go down to, uh, let's say, the Saints. Saints, number three answer on the board, 15. You need to get four more before you mess up on two more. The Browns? Browns, 11 points, number five on the board. The Rams? The Rams, number four on the board, 13 points. You're getting close, man. The Chargers? Chargers are a miss. You need to get two in a row here. Otherwise, Joe's going to be able to steal. And the number two answer is still on the board, dude. All right, Tampa Bay. No, man. Are you Tampa Bay me? was actually my first guess. <laughs> are you and, kidding uh, me? Tampa Bay is not How many there, guys so. from the same team? People are how ruining math, by the way. How many How many guys from the same team? You said three or four. You need to get three from the same team. Three you would, the general public would like to own on the same team. Chiefs are gone. Saints are gone. Rams are gone. And Browns are gone. You've got the number two and number six answers available for you, Joe. You can steal a lot of points here. Take a commanding lead. I'm going to say Falcons. <laughs> oh, Joe, come on, man. No, You're killing me, dude. Falcons? Oh, Falcons are not there. Green Bay <laughs> Packers, number uh, one. Uh, stupid. Number oh. two. This is, all fan, this is all fan-based stuff. This is like, oh. what, how big can the fan base be to say, no, we love all of our guys. That's what oh, this is. Hey, who man. eats pretzels in a draft? You got 95 points for that. I mean, hold on. You're telling me you I wouldn't did. go with Aaron Jones, uh, Andrew, Ro- Andrew Rogers, <laughs> Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, and uh, and Devontae Adams? I'd love that. Start. I'd love to, but you're telling me you don't like Matt Ryan, Julio, and Freeman? I mean, come on. What's wrong with that? Or Calvin yeah, Ridley? I, yeah, I'm, I actually, I mean, the other one's going to be the Cowboys because that's the other giant. No, fan I'm, base, I'm right? taking the Packers over the Falcons. You you, no, you, you screwed up here, Joe. You're wrong. The last answer, you're messing wait, this up. Last answer is Green Bay and what? Uh, yeah. Green Bay and the Indianapolis Colts with seven points was the number six answer on the board. <laughs> Fine. Yep. So let me see here. Yeah, that's, got, uh, at least we agree on that. We still feel meh about Tags, that you one. just got 57 more points, which puts you at 111 to Joe's 89. And uh, number four, we're going to make this triple points, okay? We're going to let Joe <laughs> oh my catch God. up a little bit. Name a What's player. That, wait, I'm not, wait, I'm not that far behind. Right. You said 111 to 89? Oh, well, I want Joe to have it a should commanding be a double. It's the way it, it works. It should be double. Right. It's triple, man. I'm looking at the spreadsheet right now. I didn't create but that this. Way, but then if I points. win this round, then basically Joe's going to be screwed in the final round. That's fine. I can take it like a man. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. Joe's going to win this one. You got it, Joe. What, you can do I'm it. I'm already on the bottom anyway. i got nowhere to go but up. Come on. <laughs> Name a player. From last time. Actually, the reason it's triple points is because the scores are so low because it's so <laughs> okay. spread out. Okay. Name a player you're willing to trust in 2019, even though we burned you last year. Joe. Yeah, baby. Get it, Joe. Let's Kenyon go. Kenyon Drake. No. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm willing to trust him. I mean, but that's not what who everyone else said. Come on, man. I don't care. <laughs> They're wrong. <laughs> Obviously, I'll answer. That one's on the board, right? Hurry, Tags. You're running out of time. David Johnson's on there. David Johnson, again, is number one. Right. Tags, you're um, killing it, man. 15 right. points for Tags. I'll play. Easy, too. I hate all the obvious ones. I'm going to play. Yeah. I will take Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell, Duh. number three, nine points. All right. Um, I will take, uh, let's see, Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette, number two, 14 points. Uh Uh-oh. Devonta Freeman? Devonta Freeman, number five, five points. This is not good. Derrick Henry, is he on there? 
No. Yeah, here we go. All right. Okay. Don't choke. That's fair. Um, Rashad Penny. Nope. Two strikes. You need to get the next two. Oh, man. That sucks. Um, who <laughs> <laughs> uh, screwed him over last year? Um, man, that's tough. Five, four, three, two. Aaron Rodgers. One. Wrong. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, that should have. Uh, you know what? Tags. That's bad form again on the public. That's I, that I, was it. Joe. This is really important to me. Don't blow this. There's 43 <laughs> points when tripled becomes 129 points that you can steal plus whatever you guess here. Number four and number six answers are on the board. All Come right. on, baby. Read me the question again. Read me. I want to. I want to hear it from your voice. I want to think about it. Okay, go. Name a player you're willing to trust in 2019, even though he burned you last year. Don't screw this up. <laughs> you're, hey, precious time. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say Carson Wentz. Do you want another guess? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dang it, dude. Uh, 129 more that's points. That's a good to one. Ten. That's a it good was, answer to that question. I think. It yeah, is, but I mean, like, especially considering it wasn't on there. Most of the people filling out this survey are listen to our podcast, and we were begging them to not draft Carson Wentz. I had him QB twenty last year, um, so Mike, you are winning two hundred and forty to eighty nine. <laughs> so what we're gonna do here oh, is uh, fast money round, and tags you do get to go first. Joe, you're gonna have to turn off your your mic. That's fine. I got uh, you. And don't listen. Right, turn I'll off just, your mic. Uh, your I'll, I'll tweet you or something when it's when it's time for you to jump back in. But, Joe, when you come back, you're going to get triple the points. Okay. All right. Let's all right. go. Yeah, just let's come go. just come back in in one minute, all right? All right. Let's go. go all ahead. right. You ready for this, Tags? Hey, you don't have much time, so to stop taking all the time to think. That's why you're winning right now. You're cheating. All right. Fast money round. What is your least favorite spot to draft in 12-team PPR um, snake draft? 10. 10. All right. What is the longest you would wait to snag your wide receiver one in a standard draft? Third round. All right. Which division is the worst from a fantasy uh, standpoint? Ooh, um, oof, this has got to be the AFC West. Or, uh, I'm sorry, oh, NFC West. No. NFC West. Yes. Oh, no, oh, you no, said West. No, you no, said no. West. Oh, crap. Uh, what is the hell NFC you're going to lose now, man? What is the highest percentage of fab you've ever spent on a player in the first three weeks of the season? 100. 100. All right. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, how much importance do you place on strength of schedule when drafting? Uh... Three. Three. All right. All right. We're going to bring Joe back in now. Joe, are you with us? Are we good? Yeah, we're good, man. Good timing. All right. All oh, right. man. You're you're going to benefit from me. Like, literally, I had to slip up in what I said. Like, he I can't. No, just don't, completely don't tell him. screwed up. Do not so tell him. So bad. I you did. were going to. Oh, man. <laughs> you're, you were going to win by 5,000 points now, However, Joe. it's important to remember you have to answer them right away because, like, that's the only reason I slipped. You didn't answer them right away, man. You took, like, four seconds are for you each kidding? of them. I'm going to punch you. <laughs> Come back over to my house so I can punch you. All right. <laughs> All right, Tags. Here we wow. go, man. You can stay in and listen yeah. to Joe yeah, finishing the task and beating yeah. you. Now, Joe, you're behind right now by Yes, I'm, I'm aware. Lot. No matter how many times you say <laughs> it, You're I'm behind aware. by 151 points. Here's the fast money All right. This is fun. This is for the people's entertainment. Now, if okay, you take go. an answer that, that Tags already did, I'm going to I'm gonna buzz it. So you have to give another answer right away, okay? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right. I'm what is your least favorite spot in a 12-team PPR snake draft? I would say nine. Nine. Okay. What is the longest you would wait to snag your wide receiver one in a standard league? Third round. Eh. Uh, all right. Fourth round. All right. Fourth <laughs> round. All right. What is the worst NFL division from a fantasy standpoint? Uh, God. I'm going to say the AFC, AFC East. Oh, yes. Yes. Come on. All right. What is the what? highest percentage of <laughs> fab? What, <laughs> what is the highest percentage of fab you've ever spent on a player in the first three weeks of the season? Oh, God, that's embarrassing. Uh, I'm like $35. Now, 35 okay. And then finally, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, how much importance do you place on strength of schedule when drafting? Uh, one. One. All right. You guys ready for yes, the answer? Yes, I am. Um, so I definitely screwed up when I said that with the division team, the one, because you, 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 were, you were like, uh, <laughs> um, and I just answered right away. And I said, AFC West. I was like, no, 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 I meant NFC West. Like, and it was like, nope, that counts. Oh, uh, wait, hold on a second. You meant NFC West? I don't. I thought you meant AFC East and just said East West instead of East. No, I, no, I, I started thinking, I started thinking Holy about. Holy cow. Okay. Seahawks, so Cardinals, you just all together just whiffed. All right. No, so, I don't like them either. That that would also sorry, be a good answer. Sorry. Us. No, <laughs> never mind. I'm, I screwed this whole entire thing up. Yeah, you really did. And remember, I'm giving Joe triple the points as when well. When we have no, when we have betting terms on the line, you cannot do that. 
<laughs> okay, I'll take it away. I think Joe still <laughs> might come back. Let's see here. All right, worst spot to draft. Tags, you said the 10th spot. That's worth seven points. Joe, you said the ninth spot. That's worth 11. So Joe oh caught up a little bit there. The number one Wait, spot point. was sixth. I can't believe you I guys didn't six. say sixth or seventh. 14 and 13 points. I love, yeah, what's wrong with six? Yeah, see, this is the problem. It's like, give me well, Hopkins. Melvin good, Gordon's good. not there anymore. Yeah, I, I don't want Hopkins. Mm. I think there's a huge drop-off after David Johnson and Hopkins. I've got Hopkins wide receiver three. All right. What's next? Latest to draft a wide receiver. Tags, you said uh, three. That was the number one answer on the board. 45. Yeah, of course. Joe, you said four. Uh, at first, you said three, so you did pretty well. Uh, and yeah, you said four. Well, that was the number two answer on the board with 32 points. All right. So I, I regretted that immediately after. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. Should I have said two? Because there's no way I'm leaving. But, you know. Yeah. All right. So I got the, I got the one and the two. Damn it. All right. All right, Tags. Here we go. Are we ready? Don't, don't. Here's, your, here's your question. Which division is the worst from a fantasy standpoint? The worst answer on the board was the AFC West, which Tag said. Two points. Yeah, not good. <laughs> <laughs> the worst yeah. NFL division, yeah. number one answer on the board, not even close. In fact, the number two answer was worth nine points. Number one was worth 67, and Joe, you got it, AFC East. Yeah. I'm a Pats fan. I know this well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Highest percentage of fab you've spent in the first three weeks of the season yeah. on a player. I mean, it's not like the AFC Wets has any, you know, anybody interesting in it, like the Chiefs, you know. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, your other answer, <laughs> NFC West. Was only worth four points, so that wasn't going to help. Oh, so either way, you were screwed. So yeah. that, they can sleep good at night now. See, tags? okay. So uh, again, on the number four question, tags, you got the worst possible answer. A hundred percent was worth four Come points. Come on, Joe, you did not do much better, man. Seven. Oh, I was at the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven, seven, <laughs> seven points for thirty-five. The number one answer was worth nineteen. It was fifty percent. Who who's really like I don't know. When you're drafting, does it really enter into your sphere? I'm looking at talent. Strength of schedule. No. I don't know. Oh no, that I mean, was that was for, that was for most fab. Now strength of oh, schedule. Most fab. Oh, most fab. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, wait a minute. Strength like of schedule is the last one. Tags. You oh, got the number one answer here. Um, so you did really well yep. on a couple of these. Yep. Really bad <laughs> on the other ones. You got 21 points here for strength of schedule importance. Joe, uh, you got the number three answer. Not not too far behind. 17 points. I don't All need right. to give the final total. You can see it on the on youtubecom slash pros. I'm not going to do uh, math in front of you on video, but uh, it wasn't pretty. Joe, you lost again, and I will be reading a poem to Tags next episode that I'm on. Uh, actually, James has sent us the things in the email, and he said, Tags, if you lose, you have to read this. Ooh. And he sent you the same exact one, so you get to read it on air right now, as a matter of fact. Ooh, Let's oh, do it. excellent. Hey, can I just tell you while uh, Bobby's reading that over? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we completely screwed you on that first answer. Did you really? Oh, yeah, dude. I sent him a, uh, a, tw- <laughs> I sent him a Twitter DM. First answer is Tag Prescott. <laughs> Oh my God! I was the DM oh. that he had to send because we wanted to screw with you a little bit. Have some no, fun. no. You know what? I think funny. we lost because of karma, Joe. Otherwise, we, uh, we definitely won. did. But you know what? We made good entertainment, and that's all that matters. We did. We did. And everybody that was did. in on it, who's going to know on the back end of it that they're going to enjoy this now, and they'll watch it back, <laughs> knowing what, knowing how well we played it off in the beginning. And it was Joe's idea. I wasn't going to cheat. It was I was all like, my idea. we can't do that. We can't do that. You're going to win anyway. I was like, can't cheat. We couldn't possibly do that. It'll be terrible. <laughs> No, come on. Let's have some fun with tags. Let's, let's screw him with him a little bit. Throw him off his game. Are you guys like, ready? For, are you guys ready for this? Yeah, let's go. Let's read it. Mike Taglier is a fantasy stun, constantly making me look like a dud. His knowledge of football is second to none. On my <laughs> list of life heroes, he's a clear number one. Handsome and kind with a beautiful soul. More clutch <laughs> than Tom Brady at the Super Bowl. When it comes to start sit, he's a permanent start. The only true keeper on the roster of my heart. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's the new Twitter handle. Uh, I oh, only that li- is it. Oh, I only listen to tags. Sage advice. No one in the industry is more concise. And while this might seem a little bit risky, allow me to say, I love Mitch Trubisky. Hey! <laughs> yes! Oh man, that was so good. That was That's so tremendous. much better than we could have writ- written. Oh my God, really James, you are really a god. god. That was fantastic. Well done. Well done. That was Round excellent. Of you know what? I'm glad excellent. I lost. That was a lot of fun. It's a, would... it is embarrassing though to talk about uh, tags being the number one keeper in my heart. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's beautiful. That's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt It, it right is. There. It really is. And I, I'd personally like to thank my mom, obvious, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, and I'd also think, like to thank Joe for allowing me to win another episode. Oh, I, man. I mean... Joe, I'll tell you what. The next time we do this, you're not invited. <laughs> oh, wow. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'd say man. that we're probably the highest ratings when I'm on. I was going to say, I was going to say with your with your face on the YouTube channel, we're probably right. going to get all kinds of views. People who don't even like fantasy football, they're going to be like, look at that handsome guy. I'm going to watch this video. That's right. I have a face for radio. That's it. I have a face for radio. Let me tell you. Joe is like, he's like a David Draymond from Disturbed, 100%. Oh, I'm a totally, it's totally my doppelganger. Yeah. Didn't you used to be yeah. an actor, Joe? Or are you still an actor? Oh, yeah. No, I was well, for uh, 15 plus years, a professional actor in the industry. Yeah. yeah, so make sure to watch the YouTube video so that even though Joe lost, you can watch uh, watch his beautiful face at youtube.com slash fantasy pros. It's all right. It's about entertainment. It's not winning and losing. It's about fun. That's we had right. Fun. We did have a lot of fun, especially when we were cheating. Every, you know who won? You know who won? The Fantasy Pros audience. That's who won. <laughs> that's who won. That's that's 100% true. Good job, Joe. There you go. All right, guys. Joe, thank you for coming on the show, man. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Always, Even though guys, you lost always. for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but again, I won for everybody else. That's the idea. But no, it was great fun. I, I'm always always happy to come on and chat football with you guys and uh, make myself look like an idiot. It's always a good time. All right, guys. Check out our cheat sheet creator at fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. And thanks also to the sponsors of today's show, pristineauction.com. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com. Uh, make sure to enter that registration code, Fantasy Pros, all one word, for $5 off when you sign up for free at pristineauction.com. And thanks also to Roman. You can go to getroman.com slash fantasypros to get a free online visit and free two-day shipping. You cannot rub some dirt on your erectile dysfunction, guys. You need to go in and get a doctor. Do it discreetly at getroman.com slash fantasy pros for a free online visit and free two-day shipping for joe pizapia and mike tagliere 